everybody. Uh, we are back talking econometrics, doing a little Stata tutorial. Uh, and here we're going to be talking about the slope dummy and general interaction terms in a simple OLS framework, how to interpret a model, uh, how to estimate it, uh, again, using Stata. Uh, so quick background, right, when we're talking about a dummy variable, we're talking about a binary coded outcome. Right, so we're separating our sample into a treatment and a control group. Uh, basically, any question that can only be answered with a yes or no or true or false uh, is going to be a candidate to be an important uh, explanatory variable that's in this coded binary or dummy form. So when we have those dummy variables in our model, we're testing whether or not the average value of our dependent variable, our y, differs across the two groups, control versus treatment be that uh, gender, male, yes or no, uh, a geographic factor, right? Was the product produced in Europe? Yes or no. Um, but now what we want to add to that with this idea of a slope dummy term is not just whether or not the average value of y differs across groups, but whether or not the marginal effect of x on y differs across groups. Right? So. Again, hence the name, the slope dummy term. Does the slope between x and y change whether or not we're in one group or another? An right. uh, example we'll look at uh, quickly here. Obviously, this generalizes to so many different cases, but we might want to look for evidence of, uh, say, gender discrimination in a wage determination model. Right. So we'll bring up some data and look at that in just a few seconds. Um, but what we're going to need to do right, is think about, well, how would we introduce a dummy variable into our model such that we can capture these differential marginal effects? Well, thereby uh, comes that idea of an interaction term or the product between two variables. Right. So if we see on the, on the, whoops, sorry, the slide over here uh, where we have uh, the x variable on the right-hand side as well as x times this di dummy variable. So since di only takes on the value 0 or 1, this once again is going to give us two different regression lines right, across the two groups, the treatment versus the sample. So as we see, when di is equal to 0, that interaction drops out. The slope, partial y, partial x, goes back to just that beta 1 or b1 term. When di is equal to 1, essentially what we end up is doing is double counting that x variable. And the slope includes both the b1 and that delta 1 coefficient. And that will look something like this, right? So if we had a negative coefficient, for example, uh, on that delta 1 slope dummy interaction, again, we have two different regression lines, one for the ones and one for the zeros. And in this case, the slope for the di equal to 1, the treatment curve is going to be flatter. The marginal effect would be lower. So let's go ahead and apply this to a, a little example data set. And we've, uh, we've gone down this road before of using the uh, Woldridge Econometrics textbook uh, example data sets put up online and available to us uh, by the good folks at Boston College. Um, and they have uh, generated the, sorry, typing and talking at the same time, uh, generated that BC use command. So if you haven't already, go ahead and install that. So SSC install. BCUs, uh, and then we're going to call up Woldridge's Wage 1 uh, example data set, and we're just going to look at a, a few different things here. But say, for example, we want to estimate a wage determination model where we figure your level of education, your level of work experience are going to be important, and perhaps gender is going to be important as well. So our baseline model might look something like this. So wage as a function of education, experience, and gender here uh, utilizing the female dummy variable. So when that variable is equal to 1, the individual in the sample is female. So we see a, a negative and highly significant coefficient. Unfortunately, and not surprisingly, right? that indicates that the average value of wage is significantly lower for females versus males. But if we want to talk about the differential marginal effects, I mean, we could apply this to really anything, but here if we think about education, 
does that extra year of education add less to female wage than male wage? Well, we need to create that, that interaction, that, that dummy slope term. And we can do this just by from scratch, right? We can generate a new variable, call it FEM underscore education. That's just the product of the two, female times education. And just to get an idea of, of what we've done here, uh, let's go ahead and, and browse education female and our newly created interaction term as well, just to bring up the, the data. And of course we see, right, when female is equal to one, then our interaction term takes on the value of the x variable education. When female is equal to zero, the interaction takes on the value zero. Right? So again, it gives us that idea of, of double counting. Right? This education value essentially appears twice in the regression line when female is equal to one, looking for that, that additional impact. Right? So let's go ahead and add that to our regression. So let's bring back up our regression command uh, that had the female dummy on its own. Well, let's add in this, this interaction. Right? So what do we have? Our education coefficient, this would correspond to our, our B1 over here, right? Is gonna be the marginal effect of education for the, uh, for the control group, right? For DI equal to zero in this case, the males, they earn an extra 64 cents per hour uh, for each extra year of, of education. And then the slope dummy term, the delta one, is how much that changes for the treatment group. So females earn not 64 cents, but 64 minus 11 cents. They earn 11 cents less per hour per additional year of education. That slope is flatter by that value of 0.11. So pretty pretty straightforward in terms of, uh, of including that in the regression. We can make it even easier uh, by utilizing Stata's built-in interaction operator. So let's check this out. Let's go back, bring back up our, uh, our regression command, and we can just type in female and then use the pound sign. That's uh, indicating an, an interaction or a, a product operation. And instead of doing what you'd think you would do is just type in education, we actually need to indicate to Stata that that is a continuous variable. So we go C dot education, and there we have our 11 cent uh, reduction in additional wage per year of education. So exactly the same thing. The main benefit here is that we don't have to use the generate statement each time and clutter up our data set with all these new variables. So if you're cycling through kind of multiple hypotheses, uh, multiple interactions, this is gonna be a nice easy way to do it. And there's an even better way to do it in certain circumstances. Let's go all the way back to the beginning and let's put in experience and then let's go female and instead of one pound sign let's go two pound signs double uh, interaction operator and then c dot education and what this is going to give us is each of those variables that are interacted individually so the female dummy and education on its own and the product of the two in this case the slope dummy so exactly the same output just an even more streamlined way uh, of getting it. Okay, so one one more thing here. Uh, once we kind of got this idea of, of interacting variables when one of them is a dummy variable, now we can just ask, well, what if you interacted two variables uh, such that they were both continuous, right? This is what we could call your general interaction term or general interaction model. And the basic idea is exactly the same, right? We want to capture the idea of differing marginal effects of x on y due to some third factor. So previously that third factor was a zero one dummy. We were either here or here. Well, if that third factor is continuous, then that marginal effect cycles up and down. It's basically a second derivative effect, right? So there's a pretty uh, nifty way of thinking about this. If we have an original model, which is y is a function of x with that beta as our slope term, well, what does it mean to have differential slopes, differential marginal effects? 
Uh, it means we can specify a function, right? Imagine that that beta is itself a linear function of that third variable, call it z. Right? And then make that substitution. So now y becomes a function of what we'll call beta 1 and delta 2. So two parameters uh, and that third variable z. Multiply that all out, and now we get a simple regression model that includes the product of those two variables. But taking this back to the beginning gives us exactly how we interpret that interaction term, that delta 2 coefficient. And it's the adjustment right, of the marginal effect of x on y due to a change in z, or it's that second derivative effect. Right? And we can use all the same tools in terms of the interaction operator in Stata that we just developed. Right? So in this case, we might want to think about, well, maybe individuals with higher levels of work experience benefit more by having an additional year of education. Right? So we might want to interact those two variables. So let's go ahead and put in our regress command with wage uh, as a function of, we'll put in our, our gender control variable. And we want education on its own. We also want work experience on its own and the interaction between the two. Well, we know how to do that. We use the double interaction operator. So C dot education, hashtag, hashtag, pound sign, pound sign, uh, C dot experience. And this will give us one coefficient for female, one for education, one for experience, and one for the product of the two, one for the interaction. And there we have it. So here's our interaction coefficient. Uh, Again, mostly due to multicollinearity, another issue, another video, uh, not significant uh, individually, but if we want to think about what does it mean to have a positive coefficient, well, it's what we may have expected, right? That individuals with more work experience benefit more by having additional education. The two kind of work hand in hand, the slope in terms of uh, experience impacting wage gets steeper for those with higher levels of education. All right, so hopefully you found that uh, helpful. Take that and run with it. Uh, oftentimes in uh, uh, when you're doing research, the most important coefficients to be estimated and interpreted are these interaction terms, right? And the more you start to think about how to properly specify a model, the more of these terms should actually be included. So don't forget to, uh, to test whether or not they, uh, they help your model out. The interpretations can also be uh, can often be, you know, again the, the most important part of your of your research. So, thanks for watching. Uh, go ahead and put any questions you have in the comments, and we will see you next time.